Welcome to the demo video of the Budget by Paycheck Plus spreadsheet. The Budget by Paycheck Plus spreadsheet contains seven tabs. The first step is the Start tab. This is where you enter all your information, such as your categories, information for your savings dashboard, and information for your debt snowball. The next step is the Log tab. This is where you will add all your transactions. This is where you'll be able to set a budget and keep track of your actual income and expenses. The fourth tab is the Calendar tab. Here, all your bills and debt payments will be added to a calendar format for you so you can easily see when your bill and debt payments are due. The next step is the savings step. This is where you can keep track of all your savings, the goals, how much you've already saved and how much there's still left to save. The next step is the debt snowball tab. The debt snowball dashboard is where you can plan out your debt snowball and see exactly how much you need to pay for each debt for each month. The last step that we have added is a bonus tab. This is a worksheet that will help you to focus on spending less and saving more. Now to start with the setup of your spreadsheet, head over to the Start tab. The first thing you're going to want to do is change the currency. The currency is standard set to the dollar sign. However, to change it, you simply double click on the field, hit the backspace button and type a currency sign or abbreviation of your own. For example, the Euro. When you type in the Euro sign here, when you head over to your budget tab or any of the other tabs, you can see that the currency has been updated for you. The next thing you're going to want to do is change the subcategories. In total, you can add 15 income subcategories and 25 savings, bills, expenses and debt subcategories. To change the subcategory, all you have to do is double click on the field, hit the backspace button to delete the text that's already there and type in a subcategory of your own. For example, paycheck number one. Now, if there's any subcategories that you do not want to use, all you have to do is click on the top field, hold shift on your keyboard, click on the bottom field and hit the backspace button on your keyboard. Now, let's enter some more subcategories so we can have a better look at what a budget could look like. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do after you've added your subcategories is add the due dates for your bills and debt payments. When you add the due dates here, they'll automatically be added to the calendar for you. All you have to do is add the day number that the bill is due. So for example, if you pay utilities on the 2nd or the 5th, the 7th and the 19th, all you do is just add the day number. Now, when we have a look at our calendar, we can see that all our information has been added here. Now that you have added more info about your subcategories, simply scroll down to add some more information about your savings and sinking funds. For every savings and sinking funds that you have added on the top, you can add a goal, a start amount if you've already saved some money and a monthly amount if you're planning to make a set monthly contribution. So for example, let's say you want to save $10,000 for a car, you've already saved $5,000 and you want to contribute $100 every single month. You just add this information here. Now, when we have a look, now when we add our information here, when we head over to the savings dashboard, we can see that all our savings goals and information has been added. You'll now be able to see, for example, that for that car you wanted to save $10,000, you've already saved $5,000, you haven't logged any transactions that show how much you saved extra, but it will take you another 50 months to complete your savings. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is scroll a little bit further down so you can add your information for your Debt Snowball tab. To enter information for your Debt Snowball tab, all you have to do is set your start date. For example, let's say you want to start in October 2020. So you just double click and select the 1st of October here. You enter the information on every single debt. They don't have to be in any specific order. You can just add them in any order that works for you or any order that you've added them before. The spreadsheet will arrange them from smallest to largest for you. Now you simply add the minimum payment that you have to pay for every single month and you add the interest rate. Now you can see that in total you pay $315 towards minimum payments every single month. If you have any money available in your budget that you can put extra towards your payments every single month, you can add that on the top here. So let's say for example you have $500 that you want to put towards your debts every single month, you just add to the $185 here and then in total you'll pay $500 towards your debts every single month. Now when you head over to your debt tab, you can see that all your information has been added here and all your debts have a breakdown of the payments, what the balance will be at the end of the month. And you can see that all the months that have already passed, it's currently December, for example, have been crossed out. Now you'll easily be able to see when you'll be debt free for each and every single debt. And you can see exactly when you have all debts paid off by just simply scrolling to the last debt on the page here. But we'll have a more in-depth look at this debt snowball tab a little bit later. First, let's have a look at our budget tab. 
Now that you've entered all your information, you can see that your paycheck information, all your subcategories have been entered here for you. Now all you have to do is enter the planned amounts. Basically, you enter the budget amounts here and the actual amounts are linked to the log tab. So you can enter all your separate transactions and the totals here are updated for you. Now, before you start entering your planned amounts, what we recommend to do is to change the start and the end date of your budget. All you have to do is double click on the fields and let's say, for example, it is currently December and we want to track our budget from the 1st of December till the 15th of December. All we do is double click and select the dates from the calendar. The reason why we recommend updating this first is because the actuals will only show for the dates selected. So this way you can set a budget for the period that you have entered. Now all you have to do is enter the planned amount. So basically the budget or the expected amounts you plan to receive or spend. So let's fill those in. You can see that now while we're filling amounts in that this plan section on the left here updates. So we can see that we can have our income minus how much we've saved minus how much we're planning on spending minus the debt paid off. This way you can easily see how much you still have left to budget. Now that you've entered all your planned amounts, you can actually see that there's still $1,000 left to budget. Now you might have noticed that on the top of here, we also have a rollover section. This rollover section was included so that if, for example, you have any money left over from last budget, you can use this amount and basically let it roll over into your next budget so it's available to put towards bills or expenses or debt payments or anything else. All you have to do to activate the rollover section is to click that checkbox. Now the planned amount here will not update. So if, for example, you also want to create a budget for, let's say, the next half of December and for that specific paycheck, you already plan to have an extra $500 available from the last paycheck. All you do is just enter that amount here. You can now see that your budget section has updated. Now the actual amount normally updates automatically, but basically because this is your first budget, there is no amount to be rolled over. So if you want to use your account balance, which we have understood a lot of people like to do, what you can do is go into your log tab and add a transaction that happened basically before you started budgeting. So let's say, for example, you started budgeting in December, so you just add a transaction for November. And let's say you had still $750 over. Now you just add this as an income amount and you just pick any random subcategory. So now when you look over to your budget, you can see that this $750 will show. If you prefer to only budget with the income you receive per paycheck, you can just deselect this checkbox and it will only use the amounts of your paycheck. Basically, now all you have to do is during these dates, enter your transactions in the log tab. So let's have a better look and see how that works. When we head over to the log tab, you simply double click on the field to have the calendar pop up and you can select a date. And now you just enter your information. So let's say, for example, you received your paycheck at the first of the month and you have straight away spend money towards your mortgage now when we have a look at our budget we can see that our actuals have been updated you can also see that your left to spend section has been updated as you have spent five hundred dollars over here and there's still twenty seven hundred and fifty dollars left to spend now basically throughout your paycheck you just keep adding transactions and the actual sections will update and total them automatically for you so for example let's say on the third of december you went to multiple stores to do grocery shopping and you spend $10, $15 and $20. Now, if you add these as expenses and all of these were groceries and let's say you also stopped to get some coffee in the meantime, when you add this information here, now when you go back to your budget, you can see that the total of the grocery shows and the coffee amount shows. So basically all you have to do is add your transactions and the spreadsheet will do the work for you. Now it might be good to know that the budget will only show the actuals for the dates that you have selected. So let's say for example, if we would start at this budget on the 8th, now you can see that all your actuals will disappear and that there's nothing that you've actually locked for these dates. So basically don't forget to change your dates on the top here. We have done this for a reason because basically this will allow you to create as many duplicates and as many budgets as you like. So for example, once this paycheck has ended or if you would like to plan ahead and create a budget for the next half of December, you simply click on this little arrow and click duplicate. Now you've created a copy and now all you do is let's say for example you want to budget from the 16th till the 31st. 
we enter this information here now you can see that all your actuals are empty but the rest of your information including the planned amounts have stayed you can of course adjust these amounts so let's say for example you don't expect any money from paycheck one you just delete this amount and you can see that your budget will update here you might also say i'm not saving this much this quarter and i might spending more on groceries because for christmas you can simply add all these amounts here and if you've already paid off all your debts or you would like to pay nothing towards your debt you just update your budgets now, as you can see, in this paycheck, you had $2,700 left to spend. Now, when we have a look at the new paycheck that we made that takes place after it, you can see that your rollover amount is $2,700. So basically, that amount that you did not spend in your previous paycheck. Now, you can create as many duplicates as you needed. And if you do not need to tap anymore, you can just click on this arrow again and you just click delete. You can also rename it. You can do anything with it that works for you. Now we would recommend keeping the original as a template as this contains all the formulas and you know for 100% sure that this template works. This way you will always have a tab that works so if you make any changes in any of the other duplicates you can just delete it and create a new duplicate if needed from the template. Now the next step that we're going to have a look at is our calendar tab. As mentioned, the calendar tab will update automatically for you. All you have to do is enter your information in the start tab. Now to change the month to the current month, all you do is basically click on this little arrow and pick a month from the drop down menu. You can also change the year here and you can pick if you would like your week to start on Sunday or Monday in the calendar view. Everything else will update automatically for you. Now there might be bills that you pay bi-weekly or any annual bills or quarterly bills that you would like to show up in the calendar. And for that, we've added an extra section on the bottom here. Basically, you just replace the name. So you just click on here. And for example, click on example bill. And then let's say you want to pay that on the 7th. Now you can see that when you go to the 7th, the example bill has been added to the calendar for you. It's ideal for those quarterly bills, annual bills, or basically, let's say, for example, you have weekly bills and you've only added them in here once. This way you can add them to the calendar again. Now we've also added check boxes. So basically you can mark off when a bill has been paid. So let's say, for example, you've paid your mortgage, you can just cross that off here. Now it might be good to know that when you switch months, so let's say, for example, it is the next month, it's January, 2023. The calendar will update for you, but the boxes that you've checked do not change. So for that reason, many people prefer to just make a duplicate the same way they made a duplicate of the budget for that month. So that way you can check off the boxes paid and at the end of the month, once you've paid all your bills, you can just delete the tab and create a new one for the next month. And that is basically how the calendar tab works. Now we've already had a look at our savings tab. So one thing that we just wanted to show you is that when you add a transaction here, so let's say for example, it is the 4th of December and you put $50 towards your car savings. Now when you go to your savings here, you can see that this amount has been updated and everything else has been updated as well. So basically, it doesn't matter what date you've entered, as long as you add information to your log tab, your savings dashboard will update for you. Now, we already had a quick look at the debt tab, but we wanted to have a little bit of a deeper look into it as we've added a couple of functions that you might enjoy. Now, on this section here in the overview, you can see that every month you plan to pay $500 towards your debts. You can also see what your balance will be or your total balance will be at the end of that month. But let's say, for example, in December, you expect to receive a bonus and you want to put $1,000 extra towards paying off those debts. What you can do is just enter that $1,000 here. You can see that this planned amount updates and that all the payments and everything else will recalculate and update for you as well. Now, to avoid having to scroll through the whole debt snowball tab, we added a little overview section on the left here. All you have to do is basically select a month and select a year and it will show you exactly what your payment will be, how much you've already paid, what there's left to pay and what the balance will be at the end of the month. So let's say, for example, it is now December 2022. We can see debt one is actually already paid off. We're planning to pay $335 towards debt three, $40 towards debt four, $25 towards debt five and $100 towards debt two. Now, when we go to the log tab and we add a payment, so let's say, for example, we want to pay hundred dollars towards that debt number three so now we can see that we've paid a hundred dollars and that there's still 235 dollars left to pay we've included this function so that basically if you would like to pay weekly amounts or bi-weekly amounts or multiple payments throughout the month you can easily see what there's left to pay without having to write it down on a little piece of paper somewhere this way you have an easy overview of what you've paid and what there's still left to pay 
Now another function that we've also added is that you can pay extra towards any debt at any time. So let's say, for example, you have again some extra money available and you say, you know what? Instead of the $335, I want to put $435 towards the debt number three. Now you just enter this amount, the other $335 that you wanted to pay towards that debt in your log tab. And now when you go to your debt tab, you can see that the paid amount is $435. So you can see you've added an extra $100. And now when you go over to this section here, you can see that this amount has been updated here as well. So basically only when you pay more, this amount replaces the plan amount and all of the calculations, the balance and everything else will update automatically for you. So this will allow you to pay extra towards any debt at any time. It doesn't have to be the lowest debt you're paying up. It could also be debt number two or any debt that maybe you just would like to get rid of. And that is basically it. That's everything you need to know about our budget by paycheck plus spreadsheet. If you have any other questions, I'll be sure to leave some contact information in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.